Hi, and welcome to this video on in the introduction to some of the conditional functions inside of Microsoft Excel. In this exercise, we're going to learn how to use the SUMIF function, the AVERAGE IF function, and the COUNTIF function. You can see here, I have a list of values. And each one of these values is linked to a category. And I just use colors here just to make it simple. I want to find the total for the red, the blue, and the green categories. So to do that, I'm going to use the SUMIF function. I'm going to type in equals SUM IF and then a parentheses. Now there are three different criteria that you need to provide, or not criteria, parameters you need to provide for a SUMIF function. The test range, the test, and the sum range. The test range is the range of cells that you're testing for a value on. And in this case, I'm going to be looking through A2 to A16 to find any values that match my test. So I've entered in A2 to A16, and I'm going to press F4 because I want to make those an absolute value so I can autofill them down. Then I'm going to type a comma. The second parameter is the criteria, which in this case is going to be whatever the value is in column D, in this case specifically in D2. So I'm saying go ahead and look up the value in D2 in the range A2 to A16. Finally, whenever I find a match between D2 and the test range, I want it to total a value. So the sum range is going to be B2 to B16. And again, I'm going to make that an absolute reference, and then close my parentheses, and hit enter. And you'll see that the red values totaled 900. And I can now autofill those down, and you can see the way blue and green worked out as well. And remember, what the SUMIF function basically is doing here is it's saying look in every cell from A2 to A16 and see if the value in D2 is there. In this case, the value in D2 is the value red. And then sum the corresponding cells in this range here, B2 to B16. So we're going to look in A2 and see if A2 is equal to D2. In this case it is, so it will add up the corresponding cell in B2. The same thing for cell A3, but when it comes to cell A4, A4 is not equal to D2. So we'll not add up that corresponding value. Now you can do the same thing with the count if function and with the average if function. If I want to find the average for the red, blue, and green sales, I can go ahead and type in equals average if, and then a parentheses, the test range, which is going to again be A2 to A16, and I'll press F4 to make it an absolute value, then a comma, the cell that contains the criteria, the test criteria, which in this case is D7, and that's going to be a relative value because I want that to become D8 as I autofill it down and then eventually D9. And then I'll do a comma and the sum range, or I'm sorry, the average range, which in this case is B2 to B16. And again, since I don't want that to shift down when I autofill it, I'm going to press F4 to make it an absolute reference. Close my parentheses and hit enter. And then there's the average value of a red, a blue, and a green. Finally, let's use the count function to total the number of items. Now the only way the count if function is different from the average if or the sum if function is that all you need is a test range and a test. And if the test turns out to be true, it just counts them. So there's no need for a sum range or an average range. So we'll go ahead and do equals count if parentheses. I'm going to highlight the test range there, do a comma, and then the test, which in this case is D12. And you know what I forgot to do there is I forgot to make A2 to A16 an absolute reference. So I'm just going to highlight it after the fact and press F4. And then hit enter. 
there are six items in the red category and as I auto fill it down four and five. So that's a very quick example of how to use three conditional functions inside of Microsoft Excel. Sum if, average if, and count if. If you're interested in more video tutorials on Excel, be sure to visit our website at www.learnexcelfunctions.com. That was learnexcelfunctions.com. You can also download this exercise workbook for practice from that site. Simply go to the uh, proper Excel course section and you can download the workbook.